Any regrets? Any regrets? Well, I mentioned at one point that I regretted calling the men, the MGTOW guys, pathetic weasels. Oh, that, that's, that's more microscopic. Uh, any life regrets? Any, any big, uh, before you answer that, uh, I want to point folks to some very interesting research, actually by one of my former professors at Cornell, the psychologist Tom Gilovich, where he looked at the psychology of regret, both from a action versus inaction perspective, right? You could either yes. regret because you've done something or you could regret for not, ha and it turns out that most more people regret things that they haven't done. Yes. Then, so in your case, if you had to identify that one regret in your life, what would it be? And uh, yeah, hopefully you could share it with us. Well, I, my life has been so fortunate that, that, and I've had so many, I'm not going to call them privileges because that word has been, <laughs> you know, been, they mean, tossed into the same pit as empowerment, right. which is a word I just absolutely hate. I've been ridiculously fortunate in my life. And, you know, I've had these rem remarkable opportunities, and I think I've done a pretty good job of, of pursuing them. I mean, when I was at Harvard, um, I had a chance at one point to make a case to be kept as a tenured professor, you know, and I was going to make the case for that on the basis of that book I wrote called Maps of Meaning, which I think I think that, well, I think I could have made a case for being kept on the basis of that book. It would have been difficult because it was a strange book, but I had supporters and it would have been a battle. But I have some problems with mood regulation, you know, because um, I have periods of depression. And unfortunately, at the time when I should have been prepared to engage in that battle, I didn't have the um, presence of mind let's say, and the clarity of mind necessary to make the case properly. And I've regretted that, um, although I don't really see what I could have done about it, because I've done everything I can possibly think of to attempt to rectify this mood disorder, which seems to be very prevalent in my family, for example. And, you know, we've been working on getting rid of it for multiple generations, I would say, with, with increasing success. Um, other regrets? You want me to tell you mine? Sure. So my biggest regret in life, maybe my only one, is that I, so I always knew that there were two things that I was interested in life. Uh, I was a very, very good soccer player, and I was very much into my studies. I knew that I would be a professional soccer player, and that one day I would be a professor. I didn't know when I was a kid, professor of what, but I knew that, you know, I was into athletics, specifically soccer. I was into my books. Uh, the soccer career went about as far as it could go in Canada in the early 80s, then I had some really devastating injuries. I didn't really grow up in a familial environment that supported these kinds of pursuits. And so my biggest regret is that my soccer career never materialized to what I had hoped it would. Short of that, I have no regrets. Or as we say in French from the famous song, je ne regrette rien. I don't right. regret anything. Uh, right. So there you go. So I guess. Yeah, well, I think I have too many, I have too many opportunities and positive things like I mean I have a really good family right you mean your nuclear family or the, the you, yeah my parents my my siblings my extended family my kids um like they're now that cracks me up <laughs> well, well I guess <laughs> they've been they, well they've been so supportive over the last year or two you right. know that that's really been remarkable so I'm ridiculously blessed on on that dimension and you know, I've worked with great people and I know a lot of people that I really respect and admire and I've had overwhelming public support for the last right. year. That's just, I just, I just don't even know what to make of it. You know, it's just, I, th and I think that's partly why, well, I'm, I'm in a state of surreal existence, I think, because I just can't, I just don't know how to process well, what's happened over I, the last I'll seven months. I'll tell you this, you are a highly deserving of all the accolades that you have and I'm, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to know you, and I hope that we could continue uh, developing our friendship and also continuing these incredible conversations because I could tell you, by far, you've been the most popular guest on my show. I think you're at least 100,000 views more than the next guy, and so it's a real, real pleasure for me to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, that burrito distribution is working for me, man. <laughs>